Let's make these. This is about a cup and a half of nuts. I keep my nuts in the refrigerator so the oils that's naturally in the nuts doesn't go bad. And they look really, really fresh. Look at them. Because I keep them in the refrigerator or the freezer, either one. I'm going to toast these for about five to seven minutes on 350. And the minute you can smell that hint of, ah, uh, that's walnuts. Get them out of the oven. They're ready. Okay, y'all, I added about half a tablespoon of flour to the nuts after I chopped them up. And basically, you do that so they won't sink to the bottom once you make your batter. That's what the flour does. It stops them from sinking to the bottom. So that's um, two ounces, which is two, uh, um, two half of this block like this. One, two, three, four squares. Okay, that's two ounces of this Ghirardelli chocolate, 11 tablespoons of butter, two eggs. I'm bringing these to room temperature. I'm gonna make some brownies. So in here, I've got a half a cup of flour, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, powder, and a pinch, just a little pinch of salt. What I call a pinch is about an eighth of a teaspoon, so it's a pinch of salt. So basically, these brownies are more nuts and sugar than these anything else. It ain't a whole bunch of flour in them, baby. Ain't a whole bunch of flour in them. <laughs> sift everything. Even when it says you don't need to sift, sift it anyway, y'all. Please, sift it all. So let me run through the ingredients again. This is 11 tablespoons of unsalted butter. I got two eggs. I got a cup and a half of uh, walnuts chopped with about a half a tablespoon of flour mixed in so the nuts didn't fall to the bottom. I've got a half a cup of half a cup of flour right here with a uh, half a teaspoon of um, baking powder and a pinch of salt and I've got a cup of sugar here I've got a teaspoon of vanilla here and I've got the Ghirardelli chocolate just two bars so we're gonna melt this butter and this chocolate together and get these brownies going so this is how I melt my chocolate I just put the butter in first and then put the chocolate on top and let some of that butter melt first in some simmering water and let the butter start melting and then I'll start mixing the chocolate in. I do everything on top of the stove and then it's just a dumping of all the other ingredients after the chocolate cools off for a minute. So I prepare my pan by, um, normally I just butter the bottom of the pan. Today I use that perfect release and I put some parchment paper in here. I put some parchment paper in and I just cut a little slit in it in the side so it can fold down. Because basically, all you're trying to do with brownies is make sure you can get them out of the doggone pan. And so this will work. Once I pour the batter in there, these sides will stay down. And then I'll be able to pull them up from by the sides to pull the pan of brownies out once they're done and cooled off. But I just got perfect release on the bottom. Spray the top with perfect release right here. And then cut a little slit in the sides of each corner so that they can lay down good. And that's how I prepare my brownie pan. The only thing you have to be careful of is when you're dealing with the chocolate, the butter, and mixing it with the eggs. So what I do is I normally beat these eggs up while the chocolate is melting. And then once I take the chocolate and butter off the heat, I drop drips of chocolate into the eggs and stir. Drips of chocolate into the eggs and stir. And all I'm trying to do is get the eggs up to the same temperature as the chocolate. And then I'll pour all of the eggs into the chocolate. It's called tempering. But basically, you're just trying to make sure you're not cooking the eggs. You don't want eggs in your brownie. That's like, you don't want scrambled eggs, baby. You don't, baby, you don't want scrambled eggs, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, so as the butter starts melting, then I flip over the chocolate and let the chocolate starts melt, melting a little bit and then just break up the rest of the butter and it'll be melted in a few minutes. This is how I do it. I mean, you can do it a lot of ways. You can do it in a micro. I mean, you can do it so many ways, but this is how I do mine. That's what the water looked like. It was barely simmering. And now the chocolate is done. And all I do is stir it, let it cool for about a minute and then start dropping drips of it into the eggs and tempering the eggs. There's a couple of drops of chocolate in the egg and I just start mixing that up. And I'll do this a couple of times, add a couple of more drops and mix it up, add a couple of more drops and mix it up. And then pour the whole thing into the chocolate mix. Just trying to get the eggs to the same temperature as the chocolate so the eggs don't scramble. That's all I'm trying to do. And this is really the only thing you need to be careful about. Now it all 
all goes in and you just stir, stir, stir. I got this bowl inside my care sign skillet because my care sign still stays stays on my uh, uh on my stove all the time. It never gets uh, uh put away in the cabinet. So I just set the bowl in, inside there. But this is the egg and the chocolate and the butter. And it looks like mousse. And the egg is good. And now the sugar goes in and you just stir and get that mixed in real good. And of course you can do this all in your, you know, um, you know, your blender or whatever. But I'm gonna stir this up with my hand. This is a workout too, y'all, right here, this part. <laughs> and now the nuts go in, y'all. And then the flour. That's what it looks like. Basically candy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, the vanilla. All right, in the oven we go, 375 for 25 to 30 minutes. There they are, hot out of the oven. I don't worry about the crack in them. It doesn't bother me at all, but there they are out of the oven. And what I do is I let them cool completely, which is gonna take about three to four hours. And then before I cut them, I put them in the refrigerator for an hour or two or either overnight because once you cut brownies when they're cold, you don't have that little brownie film on your knife. That's the key to not having that. You cut them cold and then you just stack them on your platter and they're beautiful and these will work out fine, but let them cool completely. Put some foil on them after they cool because if you put it on there before they cool, it's going to create steam and it's going to make this wet, okay? So they need to cool completely, wrap it in foil, throw it in the fridge, hour or two, overnight, whatever, and then cut them in your squares, all right? All right. Looks after it has cooled completely. It's nice and cool now. And so what I'll do is I'll just cover it with some foil, put it in the refrigerator, and let it get cold. And when it gets cold, then I'll pull it out of the refrigerator and then I'll take it out of this pan and slice it. That's how I do mine to make sure I don't have, you know, brownie stuff on my knife. You know, the gooey -wee stuff on my knife. And it's going to cut really, really pretty once it's cold. So I want to advise y'all to do that because it just cuts so much better. The brownies look so much better. And even the breaks kind of settle down. They kind of deflate a little bit after they come out of the oven and it cools. And, uh... That's how I do it. Okay, so let's put it in the refrigerator and we're gonna wait an hour or two. All right, y'all, I took left them in the refrigerator about an hour, hour and a half. And all you do is lift up that and see how easy that is? It comes right out of that pan. Comes right out of that pan. Just like that. And all the paper will come off. You don't have to worry about that. It'll, all this parchment will come off of it. So I'm gonna cut it up and show you what it looks like. So I've cut it the long way. Now I'm just gonna cut it this way. And see, you don't have all that gooey, gooey, ooey on your knife. I always use a bread knife too. And there they are, 16 squares. They're not even, that's okay. But I wanted to show you this. You see the nuts? If I hadn't put the flour in the nuts, they would all be on the back back here. They would all drop to the bottom. That's what the flour does. It allows the nuts to go to the center. You know, everybody like this little piece right here, this little burnt type piece in the end type piece but you see that if the nuts weren't if the nuts weren't tossed in flour they would all be back here but because you put them in flour they're inside the brownie all right so that's all i got for y'all today i hope y'all enjoy these it's a very very simple recipe and one day i'm gonna get all the equipment i need so i can make better videos but y'all hang in here with me okay i'm val taylor i'll see y'all on the next video bye now